in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, to whom we all have to turn back. Honorable listeners and respectable audience, you know that we have started a series of linguistics. In linguistics, we commenced the chapter that is known as discourse analysis. Day before yesterday, I told you about discourse. That what is discourse? Discourse is the use of language for communication. Today, I'm going to teach you discourse analysis. What is discourse analysis? What does an analyst or a researcher analyze in a discourse? How does a researcher analyze a discourse? And what is the essential part in discourse analysis? All these questions will be answered in today's topic. Listeners and audience, first of all, I'm going to define discourse analysis. That what is discourse analysis? Discourse analysis is the in-depth examination, investigation, or analysis of a written or a spoken discourse. I'm repeating. The in-depth analysis, examination, or investigation of a written or spoken discourse such kind of analysis is called discourse analysis. Discourse analysis is also known as discourse studies. It is also known as the type of research method in which a text, a speech or a discourse is analyzed and investigated. Now the question arises that what does a researcher analyze in a discourse? Answer to this question is, it depends upon the research area of a researcher, that what area he is going to analyze in a discourse, in a speech or in a text. A researcher can analyze in a discourse grammar, spellings, uh, social linguistic aspects, and also language techniques, persuasive strategies, religious strategies, or so many others. Listeners and guidance, then the question is. That what is the essential part of the discourse analysis? The essential part of the discourse analysis is the social context of a discourse. Listeners and audience, you know that context is very important, and then social context is very important. You know. If a person, the analyzer, does not know the context of the text, the context of a speech, definitely he will not be able to analyze the text. Because he will not be able to interpret the text in the clear and understandable way. So, the basic and essential part of discourse analysis is social context. Listeners and audience, whenever we are talking about social context, social context means uh, the place, the situation, the background culture, and also the climate change. Uh, and the situation that is related to that uh, speaker and that text 
and which a researcher is uh, doing analysis of their text or of their discourse. Similarly, what does a researcher look at when he is analyzing a discourse? Listeners and items, a researcher looks at linguistic content and also language use. What is mean by linguistic content? Linguistic content means the researcher is actually focusing upon that what is said in the text or what is said by the speaker. What is said a speaker and the speech. So his focus is on that linguistic content. And connected to this, his focus is also upon the language used. Language used mean how a language is used or has been used in the text, in a speech or in a discourse. And the last important point is that how does a researcher analyze a discourse? This is very interesting and important point. A researcher does not analyze a speech only by his observation and experience. No. He analyzes a text or a speech with the help of other experts, with the help of other models and frameworks and theories. I'm just going to present two examples for clarification. For example, if a researcher wants to analyze a text or a speech of someone, so he will uh, apply a theory. For example, he will apply a theory of speech act theory. Speech act theory. And I told you about speech act, that what is speech act and what are the three basics, three forms in speech act theory. Like you know in speech act theory, uh, locutionary act, locutionary act, okay, and locutionary act, and the third one that is per locutionary act. So if a researcher analyzes a discourse of anyone in speech act theory or based on the framework or the theory of speech act theory, definitely he or she will find out locationary act that what is locationary act and the discourse of that person. For example, locationary act means that uh, the utterance of someone, how he has used locutionary act in his spoken or written form. A locutionary act. A locutionary act means uh, saying something with intention. So how a speaker or in a text a locutionary act has been used. And how much, uh, yes, how many times he has used it. How many times, yes. And the last one, per locutionary act. What is the effect of the utterance of a text or of a speaker over another person? So he will find out in this way. This is just one example. Another example, for example, if someone wants to apply the theory of Aristotle, Aristotle framework, which is uh, uh, Aristotle model, also it's also known as models of Aristotle, like ethos, pathos, and logos. Take the example of logos. If someone wants to find out logical statements, and the speech of someone, definitely he will come to the Aristotle models, um, that is also known modes of persuasion. So he will come to this theory, logos means logical statement. So he will say, for example, uh, the speaker, the writer has used this logical statement, that statement. First of all, he will define logos, that what is mean by logos according to Aristotle. And then he will 
find out the statements uh, according to the Aristotle theory that this particular speaker has been used such kind of statements logical statements uh, in his speech so hope that this topic is clear to you